So here we are, rigging a beetle cat. In this case, a Barnstable cat boat. Uh, the way I like to set up is I like to have the mast leaning on the boat like this, sticking out to the side. And then we can lay the gaff on deck. And when we rig up the halyards, which we have to do before we put the mast up, we can see clearly what a uh, pretty good representation of what it looks like up in the air. So the first thing we have to do <coughs> is make sure we put the, ma the wind indicator on because it's, re it's really hard to put it on when the mass is already up in the air. So we'll start with that. Of course, not all boats have a wind indicator, but if yours has one, now's the time to put it on. Barstable cat boat or a beetle cat, you have to run the halyards before you put the mast up. So we'll start with the peak halyard, which is at the top of the mast. And I like to, when I uncoil the halyard, I like to run down length of the halyard and just make sure everything's all straight and then with the peak halyard peak halyard goes through the block on the bridle and through the block on the bridle it goes from front to back and then back through the block up here from port to starboard and we always put the peak halyard led to the starboard side and the throat halyard gets, gets led to the port side. It's not a bad idea to run the halyards to make sure they're straight with no twists in them. So we put the, the tail of the peak off to the side so we don't get it mixed up or tangled with the throat halyard. So then we do the lower halyard, which is the throat halyard. Once again, I'm just going to run down the line and make sure it's straight. Now the throat halyard, we lead to the port side. So, we're going to want it to go from port to, I mean from starboard to port up on the mast. So down here we go from port to starboard. And up here, starboard to port. And if we move the mast up above the gap, we can once again get a pretty clear picture of if we have it led correctly. Index is on, the halyards are led. Now I can I'm ready to put the mast up. A lot of times it's nice if you have somebody with you, you can have them just hold on to the gap. However, if your blocks, if your halyards lead, if your halyards run freely, that's not necessary. The other thing that you can do is Put a, run a bunch of, get a bunch of slack in your halyards in order to make room for the mast to go up in the air. 
as I said, the easiest thing is usually to have somebody just hold hold the cap down for you, and uh, so that it doesn't go up in the air when you're raising the mast. Now we just have to find the step. There it is. Great. Pull the peak out up just to get the gas up out of our way. And then the peak out just gets led through this deck block. Back to the cleat. We'll just cleat that temporarily. And then our throat halyard gets led through the duct block on the port side. And I'll just cleat that off temporarily. And swing that so it's out of the way. And now, ready to complete the rigging process. We can put the boom in. And the boom has a pin that keeps it in the gooseneck. Slide the hoops up. Slide the boom into the gooseneck. And then you just put the put that right in the boom crutch. And now we have something to hold our gaff from swinging into us. I always say, as soon as you put the boom in the gooseneck, you should put the pin in because it's really easy to forget it if you don't do it right away. Just a little clevis pin, I mean cotter pin, just needs a little bend over. There we go. And then we can hook up the floor stag. It's always good to make sure the forestay is led straight off the mast. There we go. Now as far as the proper amount of forestay tension, we want this fairly taut, but not so tight that it bends the mast forward. However, it should be tight enough to pull the mast up against the forward edge of the mast hole in the deck. And they always seem to loosen up a little bit in the water for some reason. So, that's about, that's pretty good right there. On these boats without side stays, the four stay does most of the work holding the mast up. It even works on a reach or going up wind. Now we put, we put the gaff on earlier, but one thing that we have to do still is just connect the string that doesn't need to be very tight. That's about where we like it. It's hanging down probably 
three and a half inches or so. And all it does is just keep the mast cap, the gaff captive on the mast. And when the when the gaff is all the way up, it keeps the gaff jaws from coming off the mast. But if you have this too tight, you can actually break a gaff jaw. So you want a fair amount of slack in it. Alright, so we've got the mast in and rigged, gaff and boom on. I'm just going to run the main sheet and then I'm ready to put the sail on. <clears throat> A trick that I like to do so that I don't have to pull the main sheet all the way through all the blocks is I actually put it in starting back in the back in the uh, cockpit, I put it in backwards. Uh, when we have a ratchet block, we just have to make sure that the ratchet block is going in the right direction. You want the ratchet block to turn when you pull the main sheet in, and not turn when it's being let out. Obviously, you can hook up the main sheet starting in the back or the front. But as I said, the only reason I'd start in the front is there's less that I have to feed through the blocks. And it just ties off on the forward of the two holes on the boom, the aft hole being for the out hole on the main. There we go. One other thing that still needs to be done, probably the last thing that we need to do with regard to stepping the mast and rigging, is this boat doesn't have much room for wedges, but generally all beetle cats get at least one wedge right behind the mast. drive that in fairly firmly. If you can fit three, you generally put three in. This boat doesn't have much, it doesn't have much room for wedges, so we're just going to go with the one, make sure it's firmly in there. The purpose of that, more than anything, is just to keep the mast from working when it's on the mooring. Alright, now we're ready to put the sail on. Part of this is just figuring out which, which corner is which since these sails have four corners. At least in Howard Boats, the customer's name is always on the forward bottom tack. And also, even if your name's not on the sail, the sail maker's logo is always on the bottom tack corner. So we're just going to open the sail up so we can get to the bottom clue, the outboard corner that goes along the boom, and just start feeding on the slides. You always have to double check when you're putting the sail on and feeding the slides on. There have been many times where I thought I had a slide on, but I didn't really. I only put one side on. And when it's, when it's the one all the way out at the end, and you've discovered after you put the whole sail on it, it would be a little disappointing. Almost missed on that one. the tack off to this gooseneck fork that comes out of the boom. And all we're 
here will attach the sail to the hoops. Now the important part of this, if we can get a close-up on this, is these uh, male fittings on the sail only go, they, you, can, you can put them on the hoop in either direction. However, they're only meant to go on in one direction. If you put it on backwards, and I'll show you, this is put on backwards, the sail ends up with a, a twist in it. And actually, they'll make the hoop bind when you pull the sail up. So, you just have to make sure that you put that male fitting in in the way the sailmaker intended it to go. In our, in our case, they seem to always go from port to starboard. Anyway, that little male fitting just has a, a groove and a slot, a uh, channel in one side that fits the female so it gets locked in place once it's in. Always five hoops and five attachments on the sail. <clears throat> All right, now we're up to the top of the sail that goes on the gaff. We'll just slide this on. tie the tack up here and we like to tie these a little loose we don't like to tie them right up as tight as they can go we leave the string a little long and that just makes the sail have a better shape um, when you tie it up tight to the the thread of the gaff, it uh, tends to uh, give the sail a hard spot and uh, it doesn't look as, as good. That sail's going to need a new string up there. So, pull out the balls on the boom and the gaff. I don't, I don't pull the foot overly tight. I um, leave a little bit of, I don't pull it too tight, I'll back off a little bit. This tends to have a little bit better shape there. You leave these just a little loose. Certainly if you're going out and it was really windy, you'd want to pull it fairly tight. But for most conditions, I find this to be fine. We'll just go through here a few times. We can tie it off. Pretty simple. We'll do the same thing with the gap. On the gap, I leave this even looser. And the reason is, when the peak alley gets pulled up all the way, it puts a fair amount of tension on this and adds to the tension on the outhaul. Therefore, in order to not have it too tight when it's peaked up all the way, we'll just leave it fairly loose. All right, 
Now I'm ready to put the battens in. Battens always have a uh, thin end, which is more flexible, and a thicker end, which isn't as flexible, really pretty rigid. The uh, thin end of a batten, the bendy end, always goes in first. So it can uh, contribute to the shape of the sail. And then the back end holds the leech firm. There's a little elastic in the front of the batten pocket that you find and then holds the batten firm into the back of the pocket. Now we're ready to furl the sail, which is a pretty important step. Actually, Tim, if you come over to this side, you could be able to see it a little bit better. Um, there are a couple of key steps to furling a beetle sail, and uh, it makes all the difference between a good job and a messy job that can actually blow open in a storm. First thing we do is we're going to just hang the sail ties between the sail and the boom. Generally there are about five of them. We hang them before we furl the sail. It makes it a lot easier once we have it furled up. Alright, so step one, putting the sail ties, hanging the sail ties in there is done. Then the second step is we want to just set our halyards right. That's pretty good. We're going to just pull the peak halyard up just a little bit, get it off the boom a little just so there's room for the sail. Once we get it furled, we're going to tighten up our throat halyard just a touch, although we'll probably do that again afterwards. And then, up here, we want to pull all these pleats between the hoops all over the same side. And that's just going to help neaten things up when we get it all done. Alright, so here's the, the key. The key to a, a nicely furled beetle sail is to grab the sail by the reef points and shake it out and make a sort of a hammock for the rest of the sail to fall into. It's nice, this sail is a few years old, so it's pretty soft and it just all falls into place. Newer sails will be a little bit more difficult just because they're stiff. So once we have all the sail pulled into this pocket, then all we have to do is just roll it up. We can take our sail tie that we already put in there. I, I cross them underneath the foam and then bring them over the top of the gaff. And that puts some tension on the sail as well as the spars and puts it together in a nice package. And then, we just continue on. And that just leaves this one up forward. When we're taking these pleats, we want to just roll these up. 
before we tie this last sail tie. And the reason is, if you leave these all just open and loose, believe it or not, when it's windy on the mooring, the wind can get in these and open up the whole sail. It's hard to believe, but I've seen it happen more than a few times. Plus it just looks better. So, now we just have to neaten things up a little bit. And uh, finish off the halyards. Put a little bit more tension on both of these. I didn't mention putting eight knots in the ends of these halyards, but that's something that you should definitely do. up a little bit and then the last thing we have to do is we're going to put the uh, cockpit cover on so in order to put the cockpit cover on we just need to put the cover bar in place Make sure the boom crutch is forward so it holds the bar in place. Now, as you can see, the main sheet is in the way of putting the cover over this cover bar. So there's a trick involved in, uh, there's a little trick that helps you put the cover on without having to pull your main sheet all the way out of this block. All you do is you uncleat the main sheet, you grab the main sheet here in the middle between the boom and the block on the floor. You just bring it back, put it in the boom crutch, which also helps keep the boom crutch forward and puts tension on the cover bar. Then we just cleat this right to this cleat. We've done a couple of things. Not only have we gotten the main sheet out of the way so we can get the cover on, but we've also tightened up the boom crutch, we tightened up, hopefully tightened up the main sheet enough so that it uh, holds the boom down. Now we can put the cover on. Certainly when you're on land, you can uh, start in the back and run around the whole front of the, the cockpit. If you're in the boat out in the morning, obviously you have to do one side and then the last corner right before you jump in the dinghy or something. A little bit easier on land. Two things about covers with these lifted out studs. Never put your cover on inside out because these uh, sockets are meant to go over the studs in only one direction. If you put them on backwards, you can't get them off the studs. You have to rip the cover off the boat. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. And then, the other thing is, there's no reason to push the sockets on more than just right over the tip of the stud. You don't need to push it as far as it can possibly go. That just will uh, shorten the life of the sockets and the cover as well. Here at Howard Boats, uh, a lot of the times when we launch boats, uh, 
hub. We'll hand off a boat to someone out in our work skiff and we'll take it out to a mooring. In that case, we always leave these first two, these first uh, uh, sockets on the corner undone, and that way when the person takes out to the mooring, you can just stuff the mooring, the mooring board right in the boat and do it back up. It's a nice gesture. Um, so that's pretty much it. We've rigged a uh, marshmallow cap boat. Thank you. <laughs>